Hello and welcome to this CEM calculation video. In this video, we're going to cover general HVAC efficiency problems. So we're going to talk, start with the COP general calculation for COP, and then we're going to convert an EER to a COP, and we're going to talk about um, how to use the COP when we're looking for um, a water energy transfer problem. So this is just an overview of some heating and different ways to measure heating and cooling efficiency. Um, just a good thing to sort of wrap your mind around things. So when we're talking about an AFUE, or an annual fuel utilization efficiency, um, this is unitless and usually given as a percentage. Um, a heating seasonal performance factor and a seasonal energy efficiency ratio are basically the same units and the, sort of the same thing, but one's usually used for heating and one's usually used for cooling. And you can also have these factors that aren't seasonal, um, like we'll see in the later problem with EER. Um, that are just energy efficiency ratings um, that are of the time they're measured or whatnot. But these units are a little bit weird. They're in either BTUs per hour per watt or BTUs per watt hour. Um, and the general reason for that is because the output of, let's say in this case, a heat pump is usually in, measured in BTUs per hour or BTUs. And the input is electricity for, for a heat pump, and that's usually measured in watts or watt hours. So that's why those units come from there, because then it's easier to um, to do the calculation. You don't have to use unit conversions if you're measuring output in BTUs and input in watt hours, say. And then the coefficient performance is um, it's unitless and it's still an output over input. Um, usually, it's something like a chiller or um, a process, and usually we have a COP greater than one, um, and that's because um, you know we're not creating heat so we can have a sort of efficiency greater than one. I think they probably did this, um, so that way it's um, usually given as a whole number, and it doesn't look like you have an efficiency of greater than 100%, even though you do. Um, and last but not least, um, a kilowatt per ton. So this is usually for chillers, and the weird part about this is this is the only unit here where you have the input power, which in kilowatts, over the output. So it's not really an efficiency per se, but um, it's like more of like a performance measurement. But so you have to be really careful when you're using kilowatts per ton that you put the input energy in kilowatts over the output energy in tons. Okay, so now let's get to the problems. So in this case, um, a 300 ton chiller has a COP of 5.1. If the chiller is running at full capacity, what is the load in kilowatts? So again, we have the COP equals the output of the input, and it must be in the same units. So we set it up. We have our COP is 5.1 on one side equals 300 tons over the input. We solve for input, and the input's going to be 58.8 tons. We know that um, one ton is 12,000 BTUs per hour, and that um, we also know that one kilowatt is 3,412 um, BTUs per hour. So we do the unit conversion, we get 206.8 kilowatts. So now let's look at this. So in this case, a geothermal heat pump has an EER of 22. And what's the kilowatt um, per ton rating and what's the equivalent COP? So we actually did this backwards here, but that's okay. Um, and we remember our units up here, so that's why I put it up here. So we're going to start with making the ER unit list to get the COP. So basically, we're trying to cancel out the BTUs and the watt hours. Um, and what's nice is we have our unit conversion that 3.41 BTUs equals one watt hour, and that cancels out the watt hours and the BTUs and makes it unitless. So we get that 6.45 is the COP. Then we need to convert to tons per kilowatt and then take the inverse. Because remember, the weird part about kilowatts per ton is that it's not output over input. It's input over output. So we go here, that we have the 22, 22 BTUs per watt hour, and then um, we take the ton unit conversion, which is 12,000 BTUs per hour, and then we take the, um, you know, the watts to kilowatts, and we get the 1.833 tons per kilowatt. So to basically take um, take the inverse of this, we just put 1 divided by 1.833, and we get 0.55 kilowatts per ton. All right. 
So this is the last problem. In this case, hot water enters an absorption chiller at 210 degrees Fahrenheit and exits at 170 degrees Fahrenheit at a rate of 20 gallons per minute. The system has a COP of 0.7. The chilled water operates on an 8 degree um, temperature difference and the condenser cooling water on a 22 degree temperature difference. Calculate the chilled water flow. Okay, so the one of the big points with this is actually the condenser cooling water temperature difference doesn't gonna isn't gonna have an effect on our problem because in this case basically the energy input in this absorption chiller is the difference in the hot water is the hot water heat flow and the um, that's gonna equal um, when we take into account the efficiency the COP that's going to equal the output, which is the, the heat that we put into the chilled water, or the cooling that we put into the chilled water in this case. So um, that's the idea here. So what we do is we take into account that any water flow has a heat flow of 500 times the GPM times the change in temperature. So we set up this equation, and on the left side we get 500 and we don't know the GPM of the chilled water, so we keep that like that. And we multiply the 8 degree temperature difference of the chilled water. And on this side, we take the COP, which is 0.7, and then we take the 500 times the GPM of the hot water times the 40 degree temperature difference of the hot water. And when we solve for the chilled water GPM, it's 70. And that's how we do that problem. Thanks for watching.